Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Central. And no matter where you're watching or how you're watching, it's such an honor that you've decided to spend the next hour or so with us today on our 100 year anniversary. And so we're about to get things started, but you know, one thing our world really needs right now more than ever, we believe is hope. And we'd love for you to consider the fact that you can be a hope bringer today in somebody's life. And one easy way to do that is by hopping on your phone or whatever platform you're on and simply sharing this message of hope because we believe it could be exactly what somebody needs today. So why don't you partner with us to bring hope to our region and our world. Here at Central, our vision is to help you connect with God and with one another. And everything that we do revolves around those two things. So first off today, I wanna to personally invite you to connect with God, to open your heart, to open your soul, to open your mind, and invite God to meet you wherever you're at. And I just believe that God has something amazing for you today. Also, if you'd like to worship through your giving and partner with us to help others get connected, you can do that by heading over to our website at centralcc.ca slash give. You can follow the prompts, schedule a one-time gift, or set up regular ongoing giving. Thank you for believing in this vision and being faithful in this way. Next up is Encounter. And if you don't know what Encounter is, it's a one hour worship and prayer experience happening tonight at 6 p.m. And we're excited to welcome guest Spanish worship leader, Isaiah Zarazua from Burlington to lead with us in worship. And so we're gonna be taking time to pray for the next generation and those who are new to our country. And so if you're part of those areas in our church, we encourage you to make it a priority to join us as we pray for you together. There is kids programming for ages five and under. And one thing worth knowing is that you do not need to pre-register for Encounter. Just come as you are. And so why don't you join us tonight at 6 p.m. Now we know not everyone likes to think about Christmas this early, but we have a lot of things coming up over the next couple months. We wanna make sure that you mark your calendars for these upcoming events. So first up is our Central Kids Christmas Takeover happening next Sunday, December 5th during our 9, 10, 30, and 12 experiences. Our Central Kids are gonna be taking the stage for this family event, and it's gonna be a great way to kick off our Christmas season. So I'm gonna encourage you to invite your friends and your families and to join us that morning. Registration will be available on the Monday before and spots will be available on a first come, first serve basis. So just make sure that you pre-register for that day. Second is our online Christmas Eve experience happening December 23rd and 24th at 3, 5, and 7 p.m. We wanna encourage you to join us at centralcc.ca slash watch or Facebook or YouTube as we spend about an hour together celebrating the birth of a baby who forever changed the world. We'd like to encourage you to get together with your friends and your family, maybe your small group, and join us for this awesome special online only experience. Lastly, something we're really excited about is that we wanna have the opportunity to be together for Christmas this year. And so we wanna invite you to join us for our Christmas Eve candlelight service happening on December 24th at 5 p.m. in the parking lot of our New York Road location. This is gonna be a beautiful Christmas service that will allow us all to be together in person to sing some carols, hear a short Christmas message from Pastor Bill. And so this is an outdoor service that will last about 30 minutes. And so we wanna encourage you to dress appropriately for the weather and bring a lawn chair if you'd like to sit. And again, all the details for that and all the December events can be found on our website at centralcc.ca. Now, our chosen method for connection with others is groups. And if you're new to Central, we have four kinds of groups here at Central. We have community groups, small groups, interest groups, and support groups. And so if you need help finding a group, simply head over to our website, centralcc.ca slash groups, and find the best group that fits you. We even have a number of Christmas groups that are starting up and running through the month of December. And so if you need any help finding those, simply head over to our groups page, click the view all button, and you can find all the groups that you need there. Again, if you have any questions or you'd like to pre-register your family to join us in person on Sundays, simply head over to our website or text the word CENTRAL to 905-937-5610. And so today we celebrate 100 years of what God has done here at Central Community Church. And so today, while things may look a little bit different on here, we wanted to invite our online family to be a part of these celebrations. And so today you're gonna to hear some of the stories of the past 100 years of God's faithfulness to us as a church. And honestly, we just hope that you feel connected as you celebrate with us all that God has done over the last 100 years. So that's all from me. Our experience is about to begin and it all starts right now. 
Hey, it's Mayor Walter Sensick, and what a beautiful day for a celebration. Today, you are gathering to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Central Gospel here in our community. Just think, 1921, the formation of a group of Christians who came together looking to make not just the families that came together, but also the greater community a better place. For 100 years, the people of Central Gospel have done that. They've made our community a better community. They've grown their faith, and in growing their faith, they've made our larger community better for them. So I want to say on behalf of the City of St. Catharines, congratulations on 100 years. Pastor Bill and your spiritual leadership team, you continuously do an amazing job, week in and week out, but you also challenge your congregation. You're challenging your congregation to think in different ways. And that helps our community because we've all seen the sign on Scott Street that has those challenging questions. And when you go inside, you get to have a discussion, a Christian discussion about challenging issues facing us. For a hundred years, faith has kept the congregation growing. And I'm looking forward to many, many years from now where you'll be able to look at your new location and that'll be the next foundation in which you've grown the community, grown the faith community, and strengthened Niagara. So to the past 100, congratulations. The future looks even brighter for Central Gospel here in Niagara. Take care. I have enjoyed many wonderful years of God's blessing in ministry, something like 66 years. St. Catharines is almost a highlight of those years when people got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and rejoicing in the Lord. May God richly bless Central Community Church in a marvelous way, and may the blessings of God continue every day and every hour. God bless you all. Amen. Hi, everyone. My name's Phil Spolstra. I served as your worship pastor from around 2002-ish to 2008. Happy 100 years. Our family deeply loved the time in the years that we were with you. We saw God do great things in and through us all. And it has been great to see how you have continued to be such a force of good in the Niagara region as you have. Allow me to honor you for how generously you have sown into serving God by loving his church. It goes without saying that God is generous to those who are generous in caring for his bride. And I also honor you for the size and scope of the vision you have for serving your community. Our entire fellowship is so excited to see you move forward in your next chapter of ministry. Pardon the pun, but it is a groundbreaking vision that you have. And I'm confident that God will honor your bold faith. Your story is one that I am very proud to be associated with. To God be all the glory for the great things he's done. Congratulations.
Today is a very special day. It is our 100th anniversary as a church family. And so congratulations. I mean, that is amazing. It is a testament to God's amazing faithfulness and the faithfulness of this church family that they kept going when maybe others would have quit. So congratulations. If you're part of our church family and all that you do, we need you. We appreciate you. Congratulations today. Well, as we look back at 100 years, uh, we do that not just out of nostalgia so we feel good about ourselves or try to hold on to something in the past. No, we look forward to what's going to happen next. We look forward to the next 100 years. And I hope that you do that as a family as well. I mean, I mean think about it this way. Why, why do we have family discussions or why do we talk about family stories? Like maybe one of your kids, you know, was complaining about something and you probably said something like this. Well, when I was your age or when I was a kid, like, why do we do that? Or <laughs> when someone's going through something, we reflect on a story in our past, something that happened in our family to identify and connect in the moment. So why do we tell family stories? Well, I think we do it for lots of reasons. For some, it gives us a sense of identity. Like it tells us where we came from. 
So for example, my last name, Markham, if the legend of Robin Hood is true, the Markhams were the ruling class in Nottingham, which means I would have been the evil sheriff's relative. Anyway, but, but again, it gives us a sense of identity, where we came from. Sometimes it's kind of a warning. Like I got this really weird thing on Carlene's side of the family. Her mom, her and her sister, all on their birthday, when pregnant with their firstborn son, got in a terrible car accident that almost cost the life of that son. Crazy, all three of them. So when Tessa was pregnant, we're like, don't get in a car on your birthday, right? Sometimes it's like a warning. Don't do this, don't do that. We learn from our mistakes or our past. Well, that was a mistake. But sometimes it's also, um, so it gives us a sense of promise. You've done this, right? We, we name drop famous people in our family. Like, for example, like I'm related to Sir Francis Drake. Um, if you don't know who that is, look it up. It's great. Uh, no, we, we do that because it says we can be something too. I, I think that's why we name drop and identify with people who are great in our past. So we do it for lots of reasons. But the truth is we do it because connecting to the past reminds us of who we are. This is who we are, but it also encourages us with what we could become, who we could become. So both positive and negative, they are reminders. Yeah, that's who we are, but, but look, this is what could happen as a result. So let me ask you this question. Who do you want to be? Um, as you look back at your life, who do you want to be? Are you willing to learn the good, the bad, and Translate that into something that propels you forward. Well, that's what we want to do as a church family. And so today, as we finalize our series, Hindsight, we're looking back in order to move forward. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, starting in verse 1. And we don't know who the author of Hebrews is. That's why it has the title. It's written to a group of people called the Hebrews. And they're going through some really difficult times. And they're challenged. And they don't know if they have a future. As a matter of fact, they think like it's hopeless. So he speaks into them the reality that, no, I want you to look back to your past to be reminded that you have a future. And that is true for you too. In Hebrews chapter 12, 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Well, that's kind of a weird statement. So who are these clouds, this cloud of witnesses? Well, they were people, the heroes of faith in the past. He reminds them that, listen, there were people who just like you experienced things just like you're experiencing. And God was doing something even when they didn't see it. He reminds them of this in Hebrews chapter 11, the chapter just before, in verse 33. He says, remember, there were those who had faith, who conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. Remember, God delivered his people in the past. But there were also those who on the surface didn't seem to be delivered, or almost like they were victims. Because in verse 35, he says, yeah, but there were also others who were tortured. <laughs> Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. And so as he looks back at the good and the bad and the ugly, he, he ties all of them with one statement. What is it that made them successful? What was it that God was doing even when they didn't see it? And he says it in one word. He says it was their faith. In verse 39 of chapter 11, he says, all of these, all of them were commended for their faith. Okay, so if faith is the secret to success, what is that? Because I want to know it, right? Not only for us as individuals, but for us as a church family. And I think a lot of people think of faith kind of as blind trust, right? You don't know something, so you just trust naively. It's naive optimism. But that's not what he's talking about here. As a matter of fact, he explains, he defines faith in chapter 11, verse 1. He says, faith is actually confidence, courage in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And again, you're like, well, there it is. That's, that's blind faith. But again, that's only if you read that definition in the future tense. It's not hoping blindly that something happens, like I really hope I get this for Christmas and I'm disappointed. I really hope the Maple Leafs win in the future and that might be very disappointing, right? It's not that. No, this kind of faith is looking back into God's proven character that gives us confidence that what God did then, he will do again. Let me explain it to you this way. Have you ever met somebody and at first glance, like first conversation, you're like, whoa, this person is amazing. And then you got to know them 
and you realize if you have first impressions aren't always accurate and they weren't amazing, that over time, through crisis, through situations, circumstance, their character was actually revealed and they weren't amazing, or maybe the reverse, maybe over time, like, like my wife and I, you, you went through crisis together and you built on things and you saw character revealed in the good and the bad and they were proven. I love my wife more today, way more today than I did obviously when I first met her and even when I first married her because I know her. We've walked through the troubled waters. We've seen the good and the bad. We've experienced the wonder of that people know and we've had things that no one will ever know go on in our life, but together we've done it. That's this kind of faith. I know she is faithful. I know her character. I know she is loving. I know I can count on her. Why? Because it's been proven. That's the definition used here. So as we look back, even as a church family, we lean deep into the reality that as we've been learning in this series, God is good. And if you missed week one of hindsight, I want you to go back and watch it. Again, it was a reminder that not good in our sense all the time, but what is best. And then week two, we learned that as we look back, God is a God who loves people. And maybe you just need to know that today. But we also learned last week, and it was a great message by Pastor Kevin Shepard. I want you to watch it if you missed it, but we learned that God also gives us a future. So as we look back at 100 years, I need you to know something. We're not just 100 years old. As a matter of fact, we're thousands of years old. That's the point of Hebrews chapter 12. We're a part of a family called the family of God that goes back thousands and thousands of years. And God has worked in all kinds of people, in all kinds of countries, in all kinds of languages, in all kinds of circumstances to bring his very best into the world. And all of that is so you can experience it too. That is powerful. And so today we're gonna look back and to help you do that, I want you to text the number on the screen here, and we're going to send you a copy of our 100th anniversary publication telling you stories. And we don't have time to talk about them all today, but I want you to read through them so you can be reminded that what God has done in the past, He will do again in the future. Not only for us as a church family, but for you. So what have we learned in 100 years of history? That's a great question. What is our family story? Well, the first thing we've learned is that we are at our best when we are tenacious in our faith. The author of Hebrews says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You know what I love about Central's history? Is that when we were at our best, We were willing to do whatever it takes. I mean, whatever it took. No matter how controversial, no matter how crazy it seemed at the time, we were willing to do whatever it took, even if we received ridicule or misunderstanding or accusation, because we were following God's vision. The race was marked out for us. We were so committed to the vision of going to the world and preach the good news that we were willing to do whatever, counting horses, Let's do it. Astronauts, let's do it. Giant milkshakes with outboard motors, let's do it. Cantatas that took hundreds of hours of volunteers, let's do it. Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames was birthed out of here. Let's do it. Missions trips across the, to all kinds of nations, let's do it. Let's do whatever it takes. And we're still living that today. You just need to know that we are committed to doing whatever it takes. And sometimes that's hard. Change is hard because again, we get comfortable with the way things are, but you can't get stuck. That's nostalgia. We've got to break through in faith to a better future. I love how Emily says it in page 46 of the publication. She wraps up her thoughts by saying, the meaning we attribute to change matters because if it signifies a failure or a threat or something being taken away, we will resist it. And we have seen that in our church history, right? where we've resisted change and missed opportunities because we weren't willing to be tenacious in our faith. But if we see it as potential to experience God's presence in a fresh way, we'll approach it willingly. And when we recognize it as part of the legacy of bringing God's hope and love to more people, we will welcome it with eagerness. We welcome it with eagerness. And so we want to continue to be tenacious in our faith, doing whatever it takes, even if no one's done it before, no one's thought of it, even if it's misunderstood, because we are passionate about God's vision for this church family. The second thing is we've been at our best when we've created space for people to experience God's love. 
In Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, he reminds them, like we're not just running, running wild. We're not just, it's not just our ideas and it's our vision. No, it's rooted in fixing our eyes on Jesus. He is the target. He is the standard. He is the metric of success. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him endured, yes, the cross. He was willing to do whatever it took. Why? So people could experience God's love. And I think that's what we love so much about Jesus is that he created spaces for people to belong, um, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. He was willing to break through barriers and boundaries, whether they were socioeconomic or religious or philosophical or ideological. He loved people no matter who they were, where they came from. There was always space for them with him. And then he died on the cross so they could experience freedom spiritually. I guess I got to ask myself the question, am I willing to die? Really, to die, to, maybe not physically, but to some of my own ideas and preferences and what I want and what I need and what I like so others can experience this love. We're so passionate about that, that, that our first core value, the C in central, is that we will be Christ-centered. And we've leaned deep into that. And so when we're at our best, we have created spaces for belonging, an invitational culture. We've worked really hard to, to let people know that when they come to our spaces, we have thought about them, that it is a safe place to explore ideas, even if you disagree with us. This is a space where you can belong, even if you don't believe yet, that we are a family that loves people, breaks down barriers, builds bridges, loves people. That's why we work so hard every week to create spaces for belonging. It's why we do groups, because we just know you matter and you need to be connected not only to God, but to each other. It's who we are. It's our DNA. And it's what we are going to be moving forward. And so we got a new building. And if you've driven down York Road, if you've not been in the area, come, go to the outlet malls and then come across the street and visit us on York Road. We are building a building, but it's not about steel and concrete. It's not about programs and preferences. It's not about creating something to capture something that happened yesterday. It's about creating an opportunity, a space for something new. It's about loving people. It's about loving people. And that's why we do what we do. Well, today we are here with my friend Pete Drost. And for those of you that don't know him, actually Pete's been on the board for the last eight years, correct? Yes. Okay, last eight years, and also been part, a catalytic part of our building process towards our new building. And so we thought it'd be awesome in the spirit of our 100 year anniversary to talk about really the past 10 years. So uh, yeah, so really excited. Thank you for being with us. Oh, no problem. Good to be here. You've been part of this journey, and I want to talk about a little bit about what that journey has been like, especially as it relates to the new building. Uh, we've been through many things that people will never know, That's and right. you will be part of those conversations more than anybody. But why don't you talk to us a little bit about day one in the new building, the next hundred years, God willing. What is What gets you excited about this space? What do you see when you think about the next chapter of Central Community Church as we open those doors? Well, the, the first thing that's gonna be exciting is simply it's a new build. Hmm. Anytime you go into a new building or a new house, it's always exciting. It yeah. smells good, everything is new. Yeah. That in itself is just fun. And I believe we're gonna see a lot of people that are gonna visit us just to see the building. Mm -hmm. But then um, I, I would have been literally petrified, not petrified. I would have had major concern yes. if we had, would have put up that building down there, $20 million plus, yeah. and it was a churchy building. Right. Because I would go, oh, I would go, oh my goodness, Lord, what have we done? Yeah. Oh boy, we, we have a problem here. Mm -hmm. We got a major issue. Mm -hmm. And um, as, you know, we were thinking, you know, pondering during the COVID, thinking, you know what, thank you, Lord, yeah. that we built a building that can be used for so many more. Right functions yeah. outside of church. So if 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 there are changes, as mm. we've seen, what it's phenomenal what can happen, yeah. shut you down. We still got a building that can be used the, the whole time. Yeah. And also, mm. uh, one, the one thing I've always loved about Central is that, you know, we change according to how, how, how society is, how yeah. people are. Yeah. You know, the gospel doesn't change. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't matter how you do church as long as you're accomplishing what That's you're supposed right. to accomplish, you know. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm more certain than ever that we did the right thing. Right. And because we, to maybe to add to that, because we stuck to what was true to us, which was we're going to do everything we can to engage people that maybe don't know God, far from God, that are disconnected from God. And it doesn't matter the medium, we're going to find a way. Yes. And so whether it's COVID or whatever, it doesn't matter because we're going to find a way to yep. engage them. And this building is just a tool for that. Exactly. It's, it, yeah. it's exactly that. I mean, a lot of times, you know, Pastor Bill will say this, you know, it's not about the building. That is a true statement in itself, but the building is still a big part of what we're doing. Yeah. Yes, it's it is. It's a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. The ultimate here is is, is for people to get safe, people to get to, get to know Jesus. Yeah. And what also what COVID showed us is a lot of people are hurting. Mm. A lot of people live in fear. Yeah. And, uh, you know, p- people are searching. People are, mm-hmm. they, they need something. It's awesome. So we're hoping that... Uh, this is going to be the beginning of something great. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's in, in the DNA of Central. I love it. So, And I think for people, too, that want to, they can always go over to centralcc.ca slash building. If you'd like to find out more information about what's happening, you can also pledge. You can still be a part of that if you would like to as well. So all that information is available there for you as well. So uh, I'm going to give you the floor. Any last things that you'd like to say that I haven't asked you about? Yeah, I, I uh, sure. So to everyone out there, keep an open mind. I personally don't know exactly how this building is going to function. The relationship between the building and our our church family. But keep an open mind as to how we do it. Because there's one thing I know. When we get to heaven Mm. and and Jesus is going to be in front of us and we're accountable Mm. on everything we do. There's one thing I do know. The Bible says a wise person... uh, goes after souls, mm. gets people saved. God is, is not going to care how people got saved. Mm. I can assure you that. He's not going to say, you know what? Yeah, there was a lot of people that got saved because you guys did all these programs. Right. But you know what? It's it, it's not really going to count because uh, the way you did it was not really right. was not really church. Right. I, I, I just stay open. And, and I've always enjoyed being part of a a a church body or, you know, in St. Catharines that's just lives on the edge. Hmm. That's different. Yeah. Like, willing to take risks. Try willing things. to take risks. Yeah. And, and the one thing I've always loved about Central is they go after the young because you need the young yeah. to be sustainable. You hear that? Get ready, next generation. We're coming yes. for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. So. Well, thank you so much, Pete. I'm so glad that you could uh, be with us today. And uh, thank you for all that you do. Thank okay. you for being a part of this community and thank you for serving tirelessly, late nights, uh, for staying up late, thinking about things when no one else knows even some of the process. Thank you for serving. Thank you for being a part of this community and we're truly grateful for you today. So okay. thank no, you. No, you're welcome. And I enjoy it. Hi everyone, what an honor it is for me to greet you on this memorable occasion of Central's 100th anniversary. I have shared 50 of those 100 years with this church family. I came to Central under Pastor Morgan, and then I was taken off staff by Pastor Council in the area of pastoral care, where I served until I retired. Briefly, I'd like to mention a few pieces of Central's unique DNA that are outstanding in my memory, and some of which I was a part of weekly services in many nursing homes and retirement homes, and outreaches especially near and dear to my heart in ministry, such as teenagers, 60 plus, for our seniors, started by Angus Nicholson way back in the early 70s, the new Christians class and the house beside the church, remember that, and 10 years of the Alpha course that I was involved in. And then there was the Singles and Rebuilders, where incidentally, I met the love of my life, Lorraine, and she still is, by the way, (laughs) got married and was blessed with our son, Jonathan, And now I also have my daughter-in-law, Leah, and two precious little grandchildren, Laura and Joshua. And we all live together happily ever after in Peterborough. You are in my heart. May God bless us all and the future of this church. And may the purpose of our existence always be the glory of God and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hey Central family, it's Adam and Wendy, Carter and Hunter Fry, and we just want to take a quick moment to celebrate with you on this amazing milestone, 100 years of ministry within the Niagara region. What an amazing accomplishment. And we were just so honored to be a part of your community, uh, serve alongside Bill and Carlene. We have such fond memories of Central. It definitely feels like home every time we do visit in Niagara. Uh, we love you guys dearly. We talk about you all the time. And just so honored to be a part of, of Central. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, when I think about Bill, when I think about our time there together, when I think about your faces and, and all the ministry and the moments we had, I, we are just full of joy. We pray for you often and we just want to cheer you on as you continue in this next year, decade, even next century of the Lord should tarry to serve people well and to love those who Jesus loves. And so we just want to cheer you on, celebrate with you and just we wish we could be there, but we're sending you our love. And love you guys. Take care. Congratulations, Central, on your 100th anniversary. Wow, 100 years. I have to tell you, you don't look a day past 80. I think I know the secret to your youthful glow. The secret is this. Throughout your existence, you have a history and a reputation for staying relevant in all that you do. Over the decades, you have evolved and adjusted and responded to the world around you. Now, don't get me wrong. You have never changed your message, but you have constantly been willing to change your methods. What you say has never changed. How you have said it has always been open to tweaking. And I am convinced that that is what has kept you so young and vibrant over the years. I'm convinced that that is what has positioned you to be used by God to reach multiple generations. So thank you, Central, for being who and what you are. It's my belief and my prayer on this 100th anniversary that you will continue to stay true to God's word and stay focused on God's mission. Happy 100th anniversary. God bless you. So, as we look back, hindsight, in order not for nostalgia's sake, not to reflect and go, oh, I wish it was like that, but rather to propel us to moving forward, we learned as a hundred years of history, that we are at our best when we are tenacious in our faith, willing to do whatever it takes. So can I ask you a question? Are you willing to do whatever it takes for people to experience the love of God? Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's difficult, even if it's misunderstood. And we also learned that we're all about creating spaces for people to experience this love for themselves, to experience Jesus. And so again, this isn't about me, it's not about you, it's about us and others. But the third thing we've learned is that we are at our best when we understand what matters the most. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse three, he kind of concludes his thoughts by saying, consider him, speaking of Jesus, who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And if I'm honest, when Central has struggled, it's because we've grown weary. We've lost heart. We've lost the vision we took our eyes off Jesus. It, it, it doesn't mean, we, we didn't do it maybe intentionally, but we forgot why Jesus came. We forgot that Jesus came to break down barriers, not build barriers. We, came to, we forgot that Jesus came to bring freedom, not religious structures that are constricting. We forget that. So 20 years ago, when Pastor Darren, who was the lead pastor at the time, and I came here, we got together with the builders who had been faithful. At the time, the church was going through a very difficult transition. They're arguing again about things that don't matter, like what worship style was the right one or what you should wear or shouldn't wear, who was in, who was out. And it was a very difficult time and many people had left the church. But there was a faithful few who stayed. And we asked them, what do you really want? And, and it took some digging and some work and lots of conversation. But as we boiled it right down, the dear builders of this great church family at the time said, we just want a church that our grandchildren will come to. We just want our grandchildren to know the love of God. We want them to experience what we have experienced, the life-transforming power of God for themselves. And so we're willing to do whatever it takes. They were tenacious in their faith. They said, we're willing to change what we do on a Sunday morning so we can create those spaces for people to belong because they matter the most. I love that about that generation. And so 20 years, we began to do that. 
and began to change. You know, some things that people didn't understand or always appreciate. We increased the volume a little bit. We, we preached a different style. We, do, we told stories and analogies that were a little more up to date and people could connect to. We used philosophy and psychology and people said, oh, you're watering down the gospel. You're, you're just a show. And no, no, we were never about that. It was all about creating spaces, being tenacious, so that those who matter most, the next generation could experience God for themselves. There's a dear saint in our church who sometimes her friends complain to her. She's a little bit older now. And they complain to her about this or that and the other thing. And, and that, that, I understand that. Change is hard. Nobody likes change. But when they do, she says to them, yes, but all of my grandchildren come. All of them. And so I'm all in. Sometimes it's going to be easy to grow weary and lose heart. Um, that, those words mean literally to have the breath taken out of you. We call it the Spirit of God. And sometimes when it's really hard, you're going to have to ask the question, does it matter? Do we have to do this? Do we have to change? And the answer is yes. Don't lose heart. Recently, my life was radically changed. I became a grandfather. And I was reminded of this story. And I was reminded of the legacy of, of Central. I was reminded that for a hundred years, we've, when we've really leaned into the next generation, whether it was through bus ministries or summer camps, all the great things we're doing now with community crew reaching into our uh, impoverished areas of the community and bringing lunches to kids in need, thousands of them, it, it reminded me, this is why we do it. As I held that life, and you know this as a parent or a grandparent, you would do anything for that child, even if it cost you everything, even if it meant doing things you didn't want to do, like watching that Disney movie seven million times. You know every song, every lyric, and you're sick of it, but you do it anyway, right? You go to places you wouldn't go on your own by your own choice. You do things you wouldn't do, but you do it for them because they're, they are what matters. It is your legacy. It's passing on not only your experiences, but what God has done in you so they can experience it too. And so today, I thought it'd be really powerful if we ended with a prayer of blessing. And today, we have an incredible special guest. The woman who started this church 100 years ago, her name was Mabel Cunningham. And for four generations, that family has been faithful. And today, Kim Quigley, her great-granddaughter, who now is leading as a spiritual life director at a Bible college called Summit Pacific in BC, is here. She represents four generations of God's faithfulness, four generations of people who are willing to be tenacious in their faith, do whatever it takes, create spaces for belonging, even if it meant change. Why? Because we always did it for the next generation. And so here today, is the great-granddaughter of the woman who started it all four generations later to pray a blessing into Miles and his generation for the next 100 years. Kim, please pray for us. Hi, my name is Kim Quigley, and I am the great-granddaughter of Mabel Cunningham. And um, I am so honored to be able to be with you on this 100th anniversary of Central. Now, I'm also one of you. I was dedicated at Central, baptized at Central, and I also have my first sense of calling at Central. So it is an honor for me as great-granddaughter, but then also one of you, to be able to pray a prayer over the next generation of Central. Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray for the next generation of Central Community Church. Lord, I pray that you would protect and direct the next generation of families. Would the family home be restored as a place of love and comfort and understanding? And would the next generation of family be rooted in that familial love of the Lord? Would the home be the church? where the family worships together, learns together, and serves together. And as the storms of life come, Lord, I pray that you would speak to their wind and to their waves, that you would speak uh, peace and stillness and blessing over their homes. Give the next generation of families eyes to look to you, no matter how smooth or how rocky the waters are. Would you also attune the next generation's ears as sheep who know the voice of the shepherd with the next generation, know your voice, good shepherd. 
Would they respond to your voice, follow your voice, take confidence in your voice, holding on to the truth of Scripture that says that those who listen to the voice of God are known by God, protected in His hands, and given eternal life? Would the next generation know the great life that is found in you, O God? Would you anchor the next generation with a deep, substantial faith, a faith that is sure of what is hoped for and certain of what they cannot see? For the generation now and those to come, would they, like those who have gone before us, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, like Rahab and Hannah, like Mabel, and the many faithful followers of Jesus who called Central their church community, who committed their lives to living for you, Lord, would the next generation hold tightly to the gospel of Jesus as their anchor and as their foundation? Lord, would you release the next generation to share the gospel, to give away the love that they have received from you, Jesus, to extend the grace that they have been given, to spread the good news of great joy that Jesus brings to all of humanity. Would this next generation and the generations to follow be, have a momentum that is unstoppable? that their dedication to you would compel them to see Niagara, know the love of God and be transformed by it. God, would you empower the next generation by your Holy Spirit? Would they be dependent on your Holy Spirit to live out their callings? Lord, empower them by your Spirit to be like you, Jesus, a light in the darkness that is not consumed by the darkness. Lord, would they be like a branch that is attached to the vine, abiding with you, producing fruit? Would they be people in a land that is filled with sadness and hatred and confusion? Would they produce love and joy and peace and patience and godly kindness? God, would they represent your self-control in a land that is full of self-indulgence? Lord, it's for this reason, for the next generation to come. It is for this reason that I pray to the Father. From every, for every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of your glorious riches, that you may strengthen the next generation with power through your spirit in their innermost beings so that Christ may dwell in, your, in their hearts and in their faith. And I pray that they, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know that this love that surpasses all knowledge, that they may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And so for the next generation, I pray, and I pray to you, dear God, that you would do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine according to your power that is at work within us. To you be all the glory in this church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Kim. So today, normally I would give the blessing. Um, I would say it to you, but we're going to do something a little bit different. And I'm going to ask, ask you to stretch a little bit. Uh, so even if you're by yourself, I want you to do this. Or if you're with a group of people, encourage one another. It's going to maybe feel a little bit awkward, but, but let's just do this together. Today, we are going to sing the blessing over one another. Today, I want you to stand. <laughs> yes, stand wherever you are, if you can. If you're driving, don't. But if stand wherever you are and uh, assume an open posture. Maybe open up your hands, open up your heart, open up your mind and receive what God wants to do for you. You see, the Bible reminds us in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith is the assurance, confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I don't know what the next hundred years are gonna be like. I don't know what tomorrow is gonna be like, but I do know that God is good and that God loves people and that God has given us a future. I know that if we are tenacious in our faith, continue to create spaces for people to belong and really dive in, invest in our time and our talent and treasure in what really matters to the next generation, we will experience the blessing of God. And so today I want you to sing it over yourself, over your family, and over the church. This is the blessing. Lord bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His 
him wholeheartedly, you will find him. That's a promise from God to you. So are you looking? Are you listening? Because he is with you. Well, thanks so much for joining us today for our 100 year celebration. And I wanna encourage you to challenge yourself to ask, what is my next step? And it could be as simple as reflecting on what we've talked about during the discussion questions, which will be on the screen in just a moment. Or maybe you would like to make a decision for the first time to follow in the ways of Jesus today. And we'd love to celebrate with you and help you on that journey. And so if you made that decision, simply text the word central to 905-937-5610 and we'll follow up with you later this week. Or maybe you'd like to get connected in a group and explore your faith with others. The best way to do that is by heading over to our groups page at centralcc.ca slash groups and find the group that best fits you. Again, if you have any questions on how to get connected, simply head over to our website or text the word central to 905-937-5610 and you will find everything you need on how to get connected. Well, that's all from me. I hope you have an amazing week and we'll see you back here next week.